Craig Denchek, say and spell your name, please. Uh, C-R-A-I-G-D-A-N-C-Z-Y-K, Craig Danchek. We have no excuse to misspell it now. <laughs> we had the we had an auto check in there that had it the other way, and it did right. it like three times in a row. Right. We finally just went in and erased it all. So, um, how long have you been with the Vicksburg Fire Department? Um, it's twenty six and a half years. I, I hired on uh, May tenth, nineteen ninety five. It was a group of seventeen. I was one of seventeen, and uh, um, really good group. It was, it was a when we began the career at the fire department, uh, a lot of good people to kind of start that journey with. So, and a lot of them were here up and up until this past year or so. Well, uh, there's still uh, four or five of us left. I, I know we have one retiring in December, so uh, our, our group's starting to retire off. But a lot of talented people, and uh, you know, and it was you know when you I guess start a career. Um, Probably not a better group of people to start a journey with. And you've done a lot during that career, including uh, now. The, were you involved in that accident almost immediately after you joined up? There was an accident involving you. Yeah, November '98. Uh, um, I was on engine seven. We had a, a fire truck wreck. We were responding to a motor vehicle collision on I-20. Um, it was a Sunday morning. The roads were a little wet. It was kind of drizzling, and um, basically the the truck was fishtailing and then we uh, went off the bridge on the uh, North Frontage Road between uh, Washington Street and the little theater. And we actually had a five story drop. It's 51 foot uh, fall and uh, it was a miracle. We, it was three of us on the truck, I was one of three and we all should have been killed in the wreck. And um, I had on my seatbelt my gear. I came out a little better than the other two and um, the captain was uh, Lee Griffin. Uh, that was actually his last call. Um, he did go to surgery and retired. And then James Montgomery, uh, it was actually his last shift as a lieutenant. He was getting promoted to captain and he was in surgery as well. Later returned at the rank of captain. Um, I was beat up, but I was not broken, so to speak. And uh, I was, very, I was the, the most fortunate of the three. How old were you on that day? I was 25. Uh, I've been on the job about three years, three and a half years, and um, and it was just uh, a miracle. So, um, you but you but you survived, and then you went on to that. You you did some pretty extraordinary stuff, including becoming a smoke diver. Yeah, um, when I when I when I joined the fire department, um, you know, I, I think individually you have to set some goals and. Um, at the time, the uh, when you go to the fire academy, that, that had the smoke diver plaques on the wall, and and as you're going to lunchroom, they kind of line the walls, so it always kind of gets your attention. And then I'd noticed we, we hadn't had a smoke diver in many years, and then uh, they also had a new program called CARS, which was Certified Advanced Rescue Specialist, and the Vicksburg had never sent anybody to that. And then one of the prerequisites was the, the smoke diver class, so I had a uh, kind of set a 10-year goal and I was like in 10 years I'd like to do the cars program and then somewhere in between I got to get the, the smoke diver and then um, in 2001 I, I got smoke diver finished it and then I think fall that year I went to the cars program and then other people followed so it was kind of like hey I did this uh, training if Dan Shea can do it I can do it too well you know maybe so and, and uh, <laughs> but you know that Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes uh, training can be contagious. You know, you, you see people that take a class, a cool. and it's like, hey, I want to do that. And I know, like, fire investigators, one of those. We've had people that are fire investigators, and people like, hey, I want to be a fire investigator. Or, um, you know, dive rescue. Sometimes people are like, hey, I'd like to be on the dive team. What and, do I need to do? And you've done all those things. I mean, you've been on the dive yeah. team. You you did the uh, smoke diver. You did the yeah. cars program. So every position that uh, is in the fire department, you at one time or another worked. I have, um, like I said, I, I came on with no skills. Uh, when, when I joined the 17 of us, you, I think the prerequisite then were like one semester of college. So we were kind of the college group. We had, some had military in college. Uh, I had um, an associate's degree. And so, um, but I came on with no fire service skills. So during that time, the city of Vicksburg and the Vicksburg Fire Department, you know, paid for training, sent me to class. and. And even though it's a team uh, in the fire service, I mean, we do everything in, in, as a team. I mean, whether it's a team of two or three or more, there's still a lot of individual training. I mean, when you go to EMT school, if you go to the fire academy for class, it's still your test, your grade, your score. 
And again, the fire department has sent me to a lot of different training during my career, and I've been fortunate. And uh, during that time, I got to work at the ranks of lieutenant captain, uh, battalion chief, uh, deputy chief, fire chief. So, uh, and and uh, you've since you've been chief, you've also been uh, very strong about making sure the people that you work with are trained. Uh, yes, uh, I've always um, been an advocate of training. Um, I, I do believe that. You can't train enough. I mean, uh, I know during COVID it's been a challenge so uh, getting some of the training in, but um, but yes, I mean, we, we, we have been a very proactive department. Uh, I've been in administration seven years. Uh, one of the goals I had was our fire rating and some of the fire rating, um, your training counts, your manpower counts, your equipment counts, and, and if you do all these things well, you score better. And I think uh, when I, became a deputy chief uh, in December of 14. Uh, I got the opportunity to develop a long-term plan. Uh, the mayor signed off on that in 2015 and we've kind of uh, stayed the course with the long-term plan and we've been able to not so much go down the list, but we've checked off these boxes on the list of uh, needs and the positive results was we lowered our fire rating. So that was a big deal because um, we went from a class five rating to a class four. And that translates into people saving money. Yes, yeah, so we, with with our manpower, our equipment, our coverage, our training, and our record keeping, our fire prevention, our 911, all these things, our water supply, all these things go into the score. We lowered our fire rating and we actually even got some of our points towards the next rating. So. The goal was to lower it, we did. I really believe we can do that one more time. Uh, we just need to put a few more pieces in place and it's probably gonna take two or three or four years to do that. But when when I talk to people about Craig Danchek, they say early on you were probably the most studious firefighter they ever saw, that you you were in the books, you, you learned everything you could learn. Well, uh, I, di I did take advantage of training um, and I know other people did as well, but um, when I graduated high school, I think I was on the honor roll like three semesters and I would look back and I was like, you know, I could have done more. I was really kind of like, you know, you could have done more than that. Uh, when I got to college, I really tried harder. I had about a three, five average when I was in, when I was in college and, uh, where did you go young, to school? I went to Heinz community college and I started working on uh, some bachelor uh, level courses through Mississippi state, uh, about the time I came on the fire department. So I didn't really finish my bachelor's degree, but, I started a new career, I was a young parent, and it was kind of just a, a point in my life where uh, you were at that fork in the road, and I had a really nice opportunity to join the fire department, I did that, and, and it's been good to me, but um, I did, I, I, I really tried to take advantage of training opportunities. Um, I when, now, when, when you first joined up, who did you look to? Who, who, was, who was the firefighter you saw that you said, no, I want to be like him? Well, um, or her. there was a lot of people that I would say I've never looked at one person and just said, I want to be just like you, but there was a lot of people that had a lot of positive attributes that I recognized like, Hey, you do this well, or you do this well. And I would like to do some of that, or I would like to, you know, you know, work on my game or work on my skill set, and then, uh, do better, do more. And, and it's a learning process. And, and along the way, I mean, you get education, you gotta have that. You also gotta have the hands-on experience. I mean, uh, I remember my first fire, um, it didn't, I didn't get an A. I mean, when I went to my first house fire, you're nervous. Some things happened that were not typical. So, you know, it's just like, you know, you look back at that, it's like, I didn't do well at my first fire, but I was brand new, I was green. I didn't have a lot of experience, but but when you get to your 500th fire, you get to your 1,000th fire, and you've been exposed to it more, you're more familiar with it, you're more comfortable with it. And then along the way, if you can just pass on uh, hands-on experience and guide people in training or encourage people to take promotional uh, Guiding processes. people in training, at this point, you've been there for 27 years. Almost 27 years. Um, do you hear yourself in the firehouses? When you walk through there, do you hear people saying things that you've said? Um you know, I think the um, Vicksburg, we, we're an old fire department, so it's been around a long time, and, and, and there was people here before I started, and there's going to be people after I leave, and, 
And I think we have a really diverse workforce. I mean, we have a lot of men and women, young and old, different skill sets. Um, you know, so it, you have people that are new, that are inexperienced. You're trying to get them the basic skills and hopefully they take it further. And then you have people on the other side of the spectrum where maybe they've been here 30 years at retirement and they're still contributing, you know, and a lot of those people, maybe they're captains, battalion chiefs, things like that, lieutenants, and they're, they're valuable employees. And the longer they stay, the better we are as an organization because, you know, you don't lose your experience. And, and, um, and everybody's different. So, like, I'm, I'm an EMT, I'm not a paramedic. You know, that's, that's kind of one of those things that during my career, I probably wish I'd, I'd gotten my paramedic, but uh, 26 years ago, they didn't really have the paramedic program like we have yeah. now. So, I, I know we're strongly encouraging people to, you know, get your EMT, get your paramedic, uh, get them part, you know, uh, become a part of that um, skill set within the organization because we do fire, we do rescue, we do ambulance, and most fire departments don't do ambulance. We're a very, we're in a very elite group of a Mississippi fire-based ambulance service. It's a small group. Elite group. I'm glad you said that because that's what most people don't realize. We have in Warren County some of the best firefighters on the planet, and I know you're you're humble and you're you're. Um, your approach is to give credit to everyone, but the fact of the matter is, we're very lucky in Warren County. We are, and um, you know, we again we have a, a, a great workforce. We have over 100 employees. Um, we have really good relationships with our county fire. Uh, we have good relationships with our law enforcement, whether it's police department, sheriff's department, uh, even people like John Elper, emergency management, 911. Shane Gerard. I mean, those people we work well with. Or oftentimes, we're at the same scenes together, and uh, and I think the people win. And then when you call 911 in Warren County and you need an ambulance, you are getting the Vicksburg Fire Department, and we are a service-based uh, ambulance service. We we want to provide the best quality of service, but there is a cost. I mean, there's a cost to you know buy the ambulances, stock them, have the manpower, have the training, but but I think working with our board, both city and county, working with uh, everybody that's involved in the process, I think that uh, we've done it well for a long time. We entered the ambulance business in May of 1969. Back then, um, what I was told, that it was um, very primitive back in the day. And you almost had people just really, they would just go to the scene, put you, load you and go. and. And now it's a lot of a lot of patient care. It's a lot of pre-hospital care, um, and we we see it every month. Every month we see medical emergencies where our workforce makes a difference, and they're able to give aggressive care, and and it's literally life or death uh, result. So you you find somebody that uh, is just having a medical emergency, whatever the symptoms are, whatever the root cause is, and. They, they go through their protocols, they go through their treatment, and the patient improves, you know. And, and we've had people come to the fire department and says, you know, three weeks ago, I was not breathing. I was, and y'all came, you know, worked me and took me to the hospital, and I recovered. And, and, and that's kind of a, just a, a testament to the training, the skill set of the employees, the teamwork that goes in that. Um, you know, and if we go to Eagle Lake, if we go to Yachtney, South Vicksburg, you know, we're going to be there with oftentimes Warren County Fire, you know, and, uh, and it's very um, reciprocal. I mean, uh, we, uh, we help one another. And then when I hired on, it wasn't really like that. It, it was, wasn't like that. And you guys have made a huge change. I got two final questions mm -hmm. for you. Number one, what, what stands out over the 20 seven years which which one incident occurred that was a great big win that you remember um there's several things that i've experienced personally that were you know the, you don't see very often obviously the the fire truck wreck 98 most people don't experience that and there should have been three funerals so that, that that's one that really stands out um I know we had a, a, a tugboat fire in 96, it was an, uh, excuse me, 98, it was 1998, it was a 96 foot vessel and it had been burning about 12 hours. I know uh, Wesley Whitaker, who's a lieutenant with us, he was there with me and 
uh, other people. And, uh, and that was probably one of the hottest fires I've ever fought. So I remember that fire as far as the training you get and then you kind of, you get up and close and personal with that and it's more than you ever experienced. And that was one of those moments where like, well, this is harder than I ever imagined it would be, and you just have to kind of grind and get through it. Um, I know I was on duty during 9-11. Um, I was actually at Station 6 on Cherry Street, so I got to see the fire service turn, you know, that uh, during the 9-11 events, the fire service was kind of put on the stage, and uh, and that changed everything. So we, we've really seen a lot of changes in the last 20 years in the fire service. A lot of them were positive, you know, especially with the training aspect uh, and just a heightened awareness of terrorist type events, whether they're foreign or domestic. So we are seeing that. Um, and then, and personally, that I've enjoyed kind of every chapter of the fire department. So, you know, when I made lieutenant, I was excited. You know, when I made captain, I was excited. When I got my EMT, I was excited. Um, you know, and even just talking with some people yesterday on duty that even 19 and a half years of shift work, that there's a lot of relationships, there's a lot of uh, camaraderie between the calls that it's just kind of experiences of a lifetime where you have an opportunity just to work with people and it could be just having fun at the station, cooking dinner, watching a TV show, or it could be, hey, we're at a wreck on the side of the road and it's difficult, you know, cars overturned, uh, patient care is needed and it's difficult you know and, and you know that's part of being a firefighter um that i think most everyone gets it's fun there's a fun aspect of it you get to put out fires and break stuff yeah and and it it, it, it can be fun no doubt and um uh, and there's there's so many stories with people i've worked with that uh i had a friend who's no longer with us named brian and he was strong he was like superhero strong and and he could he could take something throw it out a window and it was just kind of comical and uh, there's other people that uh, uh, Tal Sheffield who was one of the best captains I've worked with and uh, was just a bull was just you know he would go fight that fire and not blink and when you're around people like that you kind of want to emulate that you're like hey I want to fight fire like Tal Sheffield or you know, or you have a, a good paramedic, like, wow, this person here is really good at what they do, and that's how you do patient care. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so many things. And So in uh, 30 years, when you retire, what are people going to say about Craig Danchek and his tenure? Oh, well, um, I would like to think um, people remember that I gave it 100% and... Um, and I left it better than I found it. So, uh, you know, in whatever call I went on, you know, if it was a house fire, you know, oftentimes we don't know who the people are. We're just there to do what's needed, you know, and if we put ourselves in harm's way, that um, that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, it's just, you know, it's what you're trained to do, and, and I'm just one of many that will do that. But, but I've always tried to pride myself on leading from the front and then in administration, um, to me, the benchmark was the fire rating, that if you make it better, so to speak, it needs to be a measurable metric. I th we've done that. And, and I have to thank the board members, uh, starting with Mayor George Flags, Alex Monsoor, Michael Mayfield, because uh, they've been very receptive to everything we've wanted to do at the fire department. They're very pro-public safety. That's both police and fire, and when things are good but can be better, most of the time they're willing to help. Uh, I know uh, this spring we should be getting two new fire trucks. Again, that's part of the long-term plan, uh, and that hopefully will future uh, dividends will be the fire rating. If we can get this fire rating down to a class three, what that's gonna mean is businesses are gonna wanna come to Vicksburg and set up shop in the city limits of Vicksburg to take advantage of that lower insurance rate. And then we as a community will benefit from the jobs and the, the revenues. And then that's what we need. You know, we, we're very much a shop local community. Um, I've seen it change in the last 20 years for the better. Uh, I don't find myself driving to Jackson on Friday night to get dinner. There's too many choices here. And, and that's what we want people to do. 
and we want to have more people uh, work and live and play in Vicksburg. And I think that when we have a great fire department, a great law enforcement, police, sheriff's department, and you have good schools, you have good entertainment, your food and beverage, sports force complex, uh, river boats coming in every week. Uh, we have a great product. You know, we have a great product in Vicksburg and the fire department is just one little piece of Vicksburg. And when everything comes together, uh, I think we all win. And, uh, and I think the fire department has grown and we've improved. And, and that's what I want people to remember that, you know, we, we made a difference and maybe at those moments where I was involved in process, I, hopefully I made it better. So you're married. What's your wife's name? My wife's name's Teresa. How long have you been married? We got married in October of 2015. And uh, and is she going to go to heaven as an angel having been married to you? It's tough, but, uh, you know, so, uh, <laughs> but I will say in all seriousness, um, if you're in public safety, if you're a firefighter or you're a paramedic, your police officer, it's it's difficult uh, for the family. I mean, and, and that's not just like the spouse, you know, wife, husband, children. Um, it's also parents. I mean, that you know, they worry. Sure. They worry. Um, and now, do you have do you have a child? I do. I have two daughters. My wife has uh, a daughter uh, from. We were both previously married, so we. We both, I had two daughters, she had a daughter, but uh, so basically three daughters. And grandchildren? And we have grandchildren, and uh, my mother and father are still alive, and, um, and, and they do worry, you know, that when you're, there's been a lot of times, and I, I have to apologize to all my family members at some point where um, there was times where people had to staff the fire department, you know, it could be hey, we had people call out sick and it's Christmas day, but yet we have to provide these services. So we need people to come in voluntarily. And there's many times I've done that. I, I've said, hey, that, you know, I just kind of like I recognize the need that somebody has to get on that truck. Somebody has to, you know, work that 24 hour shift. And, firefighter, a lot of time away yeah, from family on holidays. Right. And, and you think about law enforcement, like when we have holidays, a lot of times there's a heightened uh, law enforcement presence. And you know, people have to be in the streets. You know, they have to do that, and and I think that's just life of public safety. That um, and I, my ex-wife Jennifer, I can remember, she would make a great meal from time to time, and then the dive. I swear, the dive team would call and say, <laughs> "We have a drowning. Are you available?" And I would have to look at her and say, "I have to go to work," and it would be like a Thanksgiving type spread, and you would just have to apologize to your family that. I have to go to work right now and the call just came in and, and, you know, those things happen. And, and when you've been in it, you know, some people have been in it longer than me. I mean, we have employees that have been here 44 years, over 30 years. Uh, I've been in it almost 27 years. So you miss some things. I mean, there's some, uh, you know, there's some holidays you're going to be on duty. There's some holidays that you need to go to work because somebody else didn't go to work. I know last Christmas we had some people call out. We were dealing with COVID. Our numbers were a little down, and I came in and worked 11 hours on engine six just to fill a gap. I know Trey Barton, deputy chief, came in, I think put in eight hours on the ambulance to fill a gap. And then even in administration, uh, we still may do other duties, so to speak. And, and that may be, um, you know, come on shift work for a short period of time just to and fill a gap, you know, and, and that's necessary. And, and, and I, I really, and I hope me and many others that have done that, I hope the, the people that came in behind us kind of recognize that, that, hey, these people were dependable. Like they would come to work and if you were short on manpower, you could call them and they mm -hmm. most likely would come or if you had the big fire downtown, or if you had the drowning, if you had... The big something. fire downtown, was that the biggest fire you guys ever fought? Which, which fire? Which the one that um, downtown El Rancho. El Rio. El Rio. El Rio. Um, that was a pretty significant downtown fire. Um, I wouldn't rank it as high as some others, but, um, but again, um, Vicksburg's an old town, and when you have an old town, you have, you know, older buildings. When you have older buildings, there is a higher percentage of fires it just is um, and and then and sometimes you have these older buildings there's a lot of wood there's a lot of old electrical there's a lot of 
things that may not be in code anymore. And good luck cutting this down to, to and, four minutes or so. But let me ask you, what what was the big fire? One of the biggest fires I went to was Roush Rubber. Um, I, I would say Roush Rubber, and um, I was actually working overtime. I was at Central as a lieutenant on Ladder 14. Uh, the incident happened. And as I looked south from Central Fire Station, it looked like an F5 tornado set down wow. in South Vicksburg. I could see the plume from Central Fire Station. And I remember I was working overtime. My captain was Bendel White. And I looked at my captain, I'm like, are we going? And he said, we haven't been dispatched. And we were basically the second alarm. So they, they dispatched the first three fire trucks, battalion chiefs. Yes, it was bad. People died. And then later we came in, off duty people came in. And that was a, that was a big fire. And, when was that? And, and um, gosh, 03, 02. Um, I should know that off the top of my head, but, um, but I know that was, that was a long day and there was fatalities, there was uh, critical injuries and, um, and we even had spot fires for weeks after, I mean, because there was just so much material, you know, and to this day, I mean, that, 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 that site is still, uh, it's kind of a shell of what it was, but, but those are things that happen. I mean, just when you, uh, when you have fires, there's a lot of unknowns. I mean, there's, we don't know if the roof's going to come down. We don't know if there's going to be some kind of ignition, you know, and at Rouse Rubber, it was fine dust. You had rubber ground down into almost like a talcum powder consistency and it was flammable and then they had ignition. Uh, and then we get the call and we come to the scene, but, um, so t totally changing gears in your off time. Do you wait for particles of dust to hit your vehicle before you clean it, or do you do it before the dust uh, hits? Well, um, I'm, I'm a car lover. I've always have been uh, motorcycles, cars, and, and I just mm -hmm. to me it's just kind of something American that I, I enjoy driving. I, I enjoy driving, and I also have pride of ownership. So uh, something that's relaxing to me is I go for a drive. And, and I think in Mississippi, when you have places like Natchez Trace and Natchez Trace Parkway, which are really great uh, places to uh, just kind of unwind. And it could be Saturday afternoon, and maybe you, you got your convertible, you have your motorcycle, and you go for a little drive with the sun shining on you. And, and it's just, it's just enjoyable. How, how many vehicles have you owned? Quite a bit. Um, I, I think I've had 21 Harley Davidsons. Um, I've had eight Trans Ams. I've had two Corvettes. But... Um, sometimes I try to find uh, interesting vehicles and I may keep them for a period of time and then they become somebody else's treasure and I'm, I find me a new project or a new kind of something to tinker on but uh, but I've, I've always enjoyed uh, cars and motorcycles and so what's uh, your favorite ride right now today if you went to get in a vehicle which one I've never had the rear engine Corvette. I, that's kind of something I'd really love to have, but um, everybody else wants them too, and they're kind of pricey. <laughs> so, um, but um, but it's funny because I, I have an 05 Escalade right now, a 2005 Escalade, and it puts a smile on my face driving it, and it's nothing really unique. But um, but I, I do um, when the vehicle market calms down, I, I really would like to get a new pickup truck. But um, you know, but but I enjoy vehicles and I enjoy uh, I, I enjoy going for little rides. That's 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 fun. It's good good American fun. What else do we need to talk about? Well, again, um, I've been uh, blessed to had a great career at the fire department. Uh, once upon a time, I'd I'd set a thirty year goal. I said I was I came on at twenty two years of age and I had this number like fifty two. I said I'm gonna work till I'm fifty two and um, you know, that was kind of my plan, so to speak, but, but, um, but I've really enjoyed, uh, the fire department. Uh, they've been, uh, it's been a wonderful experience and there's been so many people I've got to interact with and, um, you know, and I, I'm just gonna have a lot of, and I, I, I tell people if it ended tomorrow, there would be a lot of people to thank because, you know, I know the mayor makes a joke. If you see a turtle on a fence post, just know it didn't get there by itself. And I think that's pretty much true with anybody in the fire service that 
people guided us, people gave us opportunity, and it may be going back to Joe Leviza uh, and where Vicksburg was during the 90s, and we we're on this uh, casino boom, and the fire department's growing, and then that's a job mm -hmm. opportunity for me, and then I come on with 16 other teammates, and Chief Doris Sprouse, and you, you kind of give an opportunity, and but I've enjoyed my time at the fire department, and I've enjoyed working in every capacity I've been given the opportunity. 